I hope I can remember what I was talking about. Actually, I was 14 minutes into um, my video when the thing popped up to say that I was scanning my computer. I tried, I'm really trying to keep this computer very, very clean. So I was running a um, scan, antivirus, you know, the, the scan. I was running the long one. And of course, as soon as I was 14 minutes into my video, the, the little thing popped up to say that, you know, the scan was done and I didn't know if that was going to be on the screen or what. So, and of course, you know, who was starving right that minute. So I started over. So I'm trying to remember what I was talking about. What I actually, I do remember some of it was that, um, I have um, written slash, I said, which is two guys. And I think someone asked me, have I ever written any um, two ladies stuff, you know? Um, and yeah, I did actually, I had a couple things. Um, I had a, actually a uh, woman, woman um, vampire story. Um, the maid, the young woman, of course, you know, my, all my, all my, um, the lead characters are black always. Um, she goes to Transylvania or some jump like that. It takes place the, um, late 1800s. I can't remember, but, um, and how I got this idea, it, this idea came to me about a, um, a girl that I saw one time, I was at a club or something. And she was, I, I saw this woman that was, um, like a bodybuilder, like, and it was the first time I'd ever seen a woman like in person bulked up like this. And I remember thinking that's weird. You know, maybe she's a vampire. I don't know how that, that came to me, but, um, also, too, I had a flash of, of a black car or something. That's how stuff, a black sports car pulling up into this driveway. And that's how I got the idea. Um, anyway, so this, this woman, this, this young girl, she's a young, very young woman at this point. She goes to Tr Transylvania with her mistress. She's a maid. Lemonade. Um, and her mistress gets bitten by, by a vampire, but nobody knows that. They just think she died. And so my little character keeps saying, um, I've seen Miss, I can't remember what her name was. Um, I've seen her, I've, I'm seeing her. And of course, everybody's thinking, oh, poor little thing, you know, she just can't, you know, she can't stand the fact that you know her 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 mistress is dead she's going crazy she's seeing her you know stuff like that and but she's not the the woman's turned into a vampire so some kind of way they get back to the united states i, I can't remember um exactly how they get back to the united states and what ends up happening is the vampire woman of course she doesn't change she's you know she stays looking the age she was when she um you know, got bitten, of course. But the female uh, uh, partner, of course, is getting older, is, is you know, is, is aging. And, um, of course, in my mind, my mind said, well, wouldn't she bite her so she'd be a vampire too, so they could be together forever and, and be, you know, the same, always. But then my mind said, no, that she um, doesn't want to live forever like that. You know, she doesn't, she doesn't want to be a vampire. She doesn't want that life. She doesn't want to, you know, she realizes that sooner or later she's going to, you know, expire. She thought she's getting older. She's going to die. So, um, and then they change their personalities as far as who they are to each other. Cause you know, women used to have to hide that sort of thing. You know, they were nieces or cousins or, you know, that kind of thing. Um, or sisters, if they could get away, if they were the same race or something, because, you know, you know, they couldn't say that they were, you know, life partners. So as they go through their, as they get older, their, um, 
the their um beard as it's called the um their um relationship changes because at first you know when they're both young she's her maid so you know that's the reason why they you know they're they live together they live um you know close and they live in the same house and blah 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 and then um as they get a little bit older as the um as the as times get more tolerant it gets to be the 60s that kind of thing then they do live as you know as um roommates sort of partners sort of and then when the human female is older then the young woman that's the vampire is actually her secretary her assistant you know that helps her so they've had to change their um outer appearance you know to the face that they show to the public has to change all these years so finally the female um the human um is dying she knows she's dying so she doesn't want to leave her vampire girl alone so what she does is she invites one of her nieces that's you know a gay woman down to um where it is she lives in virginia i think i finally have them finally you know uh living in virginia hoping that there's a little spark you know hoping that there is you know they're, they're they they get to, together you know they you know meet and there's a little spark because you know that kind of thing is genetic who you're attracted to is genetic um you've never seen i'll say i've never seen one gay person in a family never every set of identical twins i've ever seen they were both gay if one sister if if it's if it's two white women and one sister likes black men the other one likes black men usually i mean i'm just i'm just you know i'm of course i'm you know generalizing but i think that's one of my theories is that who you're attracted to is genetic it's genetic that I just what I think just like I think being gay is genetic is you know you know but um anyway so she bring you know she brings her niece down and of course her niece kind of falls for you know that kind of thing and but she doesn't know she's a vampire and she's really confused about well why is she always gone why does she always show up in this sports car you know it's just it's getting dark and then the um the older woman she does end up passing away and um, that's kind of when she learns that, you know, actually what's been going on, you know, that they actually have been together for like, what, 60, 70 years or whatever, you know, is whatever's going on. You know, she she finds out about that. That's one of my women's story. And um, the um, in autumn, the second part, when she's in England, when when they when they because remember the end of the book is that they they they've set sail for England. She goes to England. Um, she meets a lady that's like a swinger, you know, a eighteen hundred, you know, kind of S and M swinger kind of lady, you know. And of course, my character knows nothing about this kind of thing. I mean, I imagine she does, you know, but she she doesn't know about um, that kind of thing, and. Um, her, you know, my hero tells her, oh, I see you, you know, lady, whatever her name is. I think it was Alexandra, something like that. I, I, I've seen she, she, I've seen you like her. I've seen you talking to her all evening. And um, my character's like, oh, yeah, she's charming. She's wonderful, you know. And um, uh, my, uh, the male character goes, you know, kind of tries to tell her uh, she enjoys the company of women. And of course, my, my character goes, well, yeah, who doesn't, you know. And then, um, and he kind of explains to her, she's like, oh, you know, so she's all flattered and everything. Nothing happens. They, they don't do anything. Um, then, of course, in the new book, when the husband and the wife go to um, the camp, um, I think I mentioned it before that they were um, what I'm going to call um, the... Um, the special treatment she she gets, I'm gonna call it the bottom of the pot um, girls. 
because what would happen is um, if the capo or whoever was dishing out the food liked you, they would scoop from the bottom of the big cauldron that the soup, we're calling it loosely, it was water basically, because they had no intention of nourishing these people. They just wanted to give them enough uh, food so they could work them to death, basically. So, um, so it was no concern. I mean, you know, you had, you probably lived off of uh, maybe two cups, measuring cups, and maybe what would be equivalent to us, two slices of bread a day. I mean, that's what these people were surviving on. But if there happened to be a little teeny piece of meat, and if it happened to be some potatoes and uh, what you call it, um, the potato peelings, they would, of course, sink to the bottom of the cauldron. So I, I came up with this. So they would scoop down the bottom. And so my the um, the um, the wife at the camp, she can't understand why she's getting the bottom of the pot treatment. And the other women are like, mm, you know. And so, and there was a lot of, besides the horror, well, exploitation, there was a lot of exploitation of children by pedophiles. There was a lot of sexual exploitation because, I mean, when you got tired of them, you just sent them to the ovens. You know, you just didn't, you know, you didn't, you don't have to worry about anybody finding out. You didn't have to worry about anybody, you know, you had pretty much, they had a, um, a free reign, you know, on these people, anything they wanted to do with it. And that was one way to kind of um, stay alive a little bit longer, you know, was to um, ingratiate yourself to, you know, one of these, some, one of these people who had power. And I thought, um, because women are more ruthless sometimes than men, I thought that, you know, it would just be the same old, same old if, um, if it was a man after a woman, you know, but I decided that it would be more, um, because my, because she, because the, um, the wife is, she isn't gay. She, she, she isn't, but, um, I, and I haven't figured out how far that's going to go. I, I have to, I have to figure that out, but that's not, that's the only women, women themes that I really have written about. So, um, let's see. Oh, I was talking about, um, some more of my short stories. Um, I, I told you already about my first one. It was kind of, it was about a, a TV show I'd seen. I don't remember a lot of it. The only re thing I remember is I wrote it on the back of an envelope and I, and with one of those little golf, yellow golf pencils. That's all I can remember. I, I can't remember a whole lot about it. Um, I had one story that kind of evolved that um, the second book kind of evolved from because I had to make sense of what I was trying to do. I had to make sense of it. Just like the first draft is they were are in the desert. The, um, the soldier, the German officer is um, in North Africa because it's the way I, I, I figured he could, you know, be in contact with a black woman. And then it was something, then in between, I kind of had um, this maid kind of woman working somewhere in this, this in, in Germany and this, in the, um, um, and a German officer kind of more or less, you know, says, well, look, you know, you know, you know, I want you, let's go, you know, and she's a virgin and what she is trying, you know, but she is what she's uh, fighting with, but there was no way for it to be going on during wartime because any black people that were in Germany, and I imagine there were quite a few before the war in between in the roaring 20s and, and, and things like this, um, there were musicians and, and you know, a lot of um, performers and stuff like that, that were played in cabarets and stuff like that, that were in Germany. But of course, when the war break broke out, they all left, especially, okay, they, they may not have left in 39 when the actual war broke out. But of course, as soon as America in 41 um, came into the war, th of course they left. So it was no way to make this 
Okay, whatever you whatever you write is what you make up. You can you can say you can make up anything you want. You know, you can you can make up anything you want. But um it has to make some kind of sense. It has to make some kind of sense. So there's no way to actually work that out. And what in but it's one scene that I really kind of like is that they go, he takes her again, he takes her away, you know, to somewhere and kind of beach house, I guess. He takes her away and um um he you know he gives her her own room you know when they get there and she he says something like he he tries to kiss her or something he tries to you know he tries tries to you know and she you know is just like really really scared of him and he says well, what's the matter woman for having sex you act like you've never had sex before but of course he says something else and that's another thing. I don't use a lot of curse cuss words. I don't think it's necessary. Once in a while, I think at autumn, I might have said hell and damn, and I might have said F U C K maybe once, once. But it was in the context of someone saying, hey, let's, you know. But, um, and he says, well, you act like you've never, you know, before. And she's like, well, I haven't. And then that's when he realizes she's a virgin. He's like, okay, just, just go in your room. Let's go to sleep, little virgin. I do not want to be the one. But um, she comes out of the room, you know, the bedroom. And she's like, um, I am in this romantic place. Um, you know, the Mediterranean is right outside my door. And, um, you know, it, and I'm in this wonderful romantic place and with you, and I don't know how I'm going to explain to my granddaughter, I may have someday why I didn't do this, you know? And so, um, you know, he says, well, you know, let's go, you know, and, um, she, well, the vision, the, 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 um, the picture in my head is her standing in his doorway, actually standing in his doorway. And he, of course, he's in the bed. He's been reading. He's sitting up, you know, he's propped up pillows and he's sitting there reading. And um, she's standing in the doorway talking to him, and, you know, saying these things to him about how am I going to explain to my one day possibly granddaughter why I didn't, you know, lose my virginity to you, you know. And then he says, um, well... Um, you know, it's a short walk from that doorway, you know, to my arms. And she says to him, no, it's the longest walk I'm ever going to take. But it kind of, that's where it kind of ends because I couldn't make it make any sense. I couldn't make it make sense of her. Like I said, your imagination, you can say anything you freaking want to. It's your imagination. It's what you want to do. But I, I just the war is important um for the gist of the story um so this could have been could have happened in 37 38 the nazis what went into power in 33 this could have happened like but i think we the back we need the back i need the backdrop that's the word i'm looking for i need the backdrop of the war for the intensity and for the danger, you know, of what's going on. Um, so, and um, of course, like I said, one of my medieval stories, one of my uh, Robin Hood-esque, you know, um, stories, my, th those are the only two virgins that I've ever had. Um, females and, and I have yet to write a virgin boy. I wouldn't have a I wouldn't have a clue. Well man, I mean I don't mean a boy. Um uh, man because I don't know I don't know how that would go. Unless it would be an older woman. I mean I've kind of um um suggested kind of at it but um because um the main character um one of my main character goes away to school and he meets an older woman and that's how he learns to um 
do his thing. But I will have to, I'll have to talk about that in the next one.